the hips stay right over my ankles. The shoulders are simply tilting past my toes when I do that. Look how little I have to tilt when I actually do that, right? Do you see that? It's literally when the, when the hips are here, my tilt is just very minimal from the, from the waist. I'm going right over my belt line. So in the way that I always have described that, if I had 50% of my weight on this side of the rod and 50% on this side, I want to make sure that when I tilt, okay, wait, if my legs were straight, now about 90% is on that side. If I flex down, but I keep my hip right over my ankle, well, now that balances me and puts about 20 more percent back here to where now it's 70 percent here, 30 percent here. Does that make sense? All right, so real quick though, before we even start this, because it's just, it's, it's beyond impressive to me. I always talk about it. When did you start playing golf? About a year and a half ago now. Okay, so keep that in mind when you watch this golf swing and you watch this guy. This guy in the opening round of Junior World at La Costa where they've played WGC events goes out and shoots 71 in the first round. And out of how many kids? 170. 170 of the best players in the world that are his age. Uh, he was in sixth place after the first day. And, you know, and, and obviously, I mean, just the fact that that round is even possible, um, not only at your age, but for somebody who's played for a, a year and a half is remarkable because it typically takes people that time to, you know, just learn to golf, let alone get the ball in the hole in that amount of shots and have it not just be nine holes, but actually 18 holes. <laughs> you know, it's unbelievable. It's actually unbelievable. So I just wanted to make sure that our viewer knew that this was a player right here who's literally been playing golf for a year and a half and working with me, I would say now, uh, how long now? Like a year. Like a year. Yeah, like a year of that, which is, that's a big, I mean, it, it's big for, you know, he was smart. And the family came here and, you know, they said, hey, this guy, he really loves the game. So it wasn't like, let's figure this out first and then get instruction. Let's just get instruction and let's start doing it right from the beginning. Um, and when you find the right coach, I think that's actually incredibly doable. People always wonder, do you just get used to the game a little bit and then get lessons you know, do you have to get good enough to get lessons? Well, what's the point of lessons? Lessons are to get you better from the get-go. And, and hopefully, you know, everybody out there is finding somebody who can from this, from just build it from the ground up right away. This guy's got an awesome move. I can actually tell you, though, probably what we're going to be working on a little bit today, okay? So with his body, you know, Tyler has this really classic move that I talk about. It's like the Sam Snead hips, right? They just, they just, they just coast right through there. Uh, we work hard on making sure our upper body stays on top of our lower body. We make sure that we have the right setup is always big for you. And the ability to turn that hip back as that chest gets over the front foot. That's the big one right here, guys, watch. That left hip back and the chest over the front foot. Tyler's at times had to think that his left hip is going back to the putting green back here. So Gabe, you can show him the ninth green back there. Boom. Yep, that's about it what just straight behind me that's where the feet has to feel the left hip is going in order to not slide that's number one um but today showing up i saw a couple pure shots but what are they doing just a little to the right. tipping a little to the right some people would love that this guy hits a little butter one yard draw um so we're going to get back to that things i think about right away ball position sometimes ball position goes too far forward and then the person with the same swing swings a little bit left across it and then it cuts the golf ball just a hair, right? Yep. Uh, with the same swing. If I also, if, that's check, if that checks out, then I want to check out to make sure the person has turned deeply enough to the top of their swing. A lot of times what happens is the arms will outswing the body a little bit. And therefore what happens when the body transitions back to the golf ball, the arms and hands are just a little behind. And then it leaks a little right. That's always something to work towards not doing, but the big thing for me would be, uh, let's, let's check ball position right away. Because typically if you're hitting it solid and it's just tipping right and not left, a lot of times that's just something simple in the setup, okay? All right, buddy, let's check it out. How about that move for a year and a half, Gabe?
lot of athleticism. Yeah, um, played traveling soccer all around the world, this guy. This guy's got, what, what, what team did you play for? I played for SCSC, that was the club, and then uh, the tournament in Sweden was uh, Gothia Cup. Mm -hmm. That was a great experience. I love playing. Yeah, he played a big old tournament in Sweden. Yeah. Uh, this guy was uh, uh, just a stud, and uh, three concussions later, yeah. and said, maybe another sport, <laughs> maybe golf. <laughs> That's unbelievable. This, yeah, this guy from headers and getting uh, a knee to the back of the dome, huh? Yep, and then one oh. was accidentally by a teammate. Oh. Dude, it's crazy. Pretty consistent, isn't he? He's really sneaky strong. All right, but oh, dude, for sure. Come on, come on over here. Such a good athlete. All right, here we go. So let's take a closer look at this right here. It's, 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 it just boils down to setup, buddy. And, and, and the big thing that I see here, the stance. Let's get the width correct first of all. The width. Shoulders. More to the middle of the feet with the irons. Okay. So I want to see that, you know, more of the middle of your feet in line with the outsides of your shoulders, okay? And that will be a little bit better of a width of stance. Number two, here's the big thing. Do you see the golf club and how it's actually behind yep. 90 degrees? Yep. I want to see you just at least straighten that out and get it perpendicular to your feet, okay? okay? That's number two. Now, the real big thing that I always get you on is when you stand straight up like this, we want to get that one-inch hip bump. Okay. Now, when that hint, when that hip bumps forward, the spine angle goes back, and now I can turn my chest over the inside of my back foot more. Okay. So, what it's easy for you to do is, if we're wide and we're sitting there, kind of straight up and down with our spine, the club's back here. Well, now you have to create those angles in your backswing, as opposed to just being in those positions to turn and unwind. Okay. All right, so that's number one. So this will be a real obvious one. Do you see how much more over it you are yep. and how low your hands are? Mm -hmm. Okay, so one thing I want to make sure you do a little better job of is really get your feet square, first of all. That left foot creeps back behind your right, okay? And I want to see it in line with your shoulders, you know, just down the line. So just get your feet square. That's number one. Sometimes the feet open up and the path can get a little left across it and you swing down the line of your feet and there's the reason why you hit the fade, right? Okay, but here's the big thing. If you look at Cam, Cam's hips stay right over in line with his ankles, right? You see how far your hips are sitting behind the golf ball? Yep. Okay, that's number one. So what happens there is when the lower body is back this way, it forces the upper body now to have to tilt more to get over the golf ball. Does that make sense? Yep. And when the lower body is back, upper body tilts more, the hands drop lower, and then the shaft is lower like that, and we're just not quite in the ideal position once again to just turn and unwind. So, some checkpoints there. If you look at the space he has between his hands and his body, typically what that is, is that's going to be the distance like a hitchhiker's thumb from the grip. Does that make sense? Right there. Wouldn't be just down in here. Okay, you need some space. That's number one. Number two, obviously we have hips over ankles, and really, if you look at this, Tyler, you know we always like to see those shoulders tilted past the toes, and you can see that they're barely tilted past your toes, where Cam, you know, and a lot of the better players get a good, you know, three, four inches past the toes there. So, very important to create space to swing underneath you and not play golf around you. So really, what we're gonna be working on here, let's just go right through, let's hop up on the mat here, and let's go right through the checkpoints. Let's, you know, just when in doubt, get the alignment rods down, right? Get the T pattern, especially when we're sitting here talking about having the golf club you know, perpendicular to your feet, having your feet square. So get the feet parallel to that. Yeah, we have a little narrower. See, this one needs to be up there. Yeah, look at the seam on the mat. See, see the seam on the mat? I made this club parallel to that. So look at your right foot relative to your left. Yeah, exactly, and pull that one back, okay? Yeah. yeah, and you can see, I mean, dude, you know what's funny? With as much as that feels close to you, look at the fact that this foot is still behind the seam, and that one's ahead of it more, right? Yeah. So that, that's actually square, so you need to start getting that lower, lower body set square. Okay. Now, number, number two, the reason I don't like the too open of a stance 
is it really restricts the hips too from turning. It's like negating the rotation before it even starts. This would actually promote more. This would be a little bit less, okay? Um, so let's set up again in there. Feet. There you go. So you just have to, you have to work that there, okay? So then we have a narrower stance. You can flare that left foot out a little bit more. Bump the handle of the club forward with the, hip, with the hips. Start right there. Yeah, that's much better. Now, the setup buys from back here. Stand up, like feel your knees just straighten out like this. Exactly. And the hands up a little bit more. There you go, bud. And flex down a little bit more. There you go. Now we're talking. Now we're talking, bud. So you don't have to hit that ball. You can just like here, you can just like take a practice swing, like just feeling that. So what needs to happen when you have, notice how there were a few things right there that needed to take place, right? And even the viewers probably sitting there thinking, man, this guy's gonna have to remember this, this, this. Like there has to be a process that you get into it that hits the checklist for everything you're looking to do, okay? So number one, to me the common sense one, Toes together, toes together, widening out. Knees, toes, perfect. Have the right width of stance. There's my hip bump. Now look at the grip needs to move forward with my hip. We have that club back here. I wanna see that club centered more up in front of you, okay? So make sure, toes together, right width of stance. There's my hip bump, there's the club. Now, I can almost step out of my own body and visualize what's happening from the face on view, from the angle that Gabe's taking this video from. Then I wanna flip it around and be able to say, okay, well now the hips stay right over my ankles. The shoulders are simply tilting past my toes when I do that. Look how little I have to tilt when I actually do that, right? Do you see that? It's literally when the, when the hips are here, my tilt just is very minimal from the, from the waist. I'm going right over my belt line. So in the way that I always have described that, Tyler, because you know, we do talk about setup quite a bit and it's important that you get this dialed in. If I had 50% of my weight on this side of the rod and 50% on this side, I wanna make sure that when I tilt, okay, wait, if my legs were straight, now about 90% on that side. If I flex down, but I keep my hip right over my ankle, well now that balances me and puts about 20 more percent back here to where now it's 70% here, 30% here. Does that make sense? So if I'm straight up and down, it's 50-50. Tilt, oh, about 90. I feel like I'm a face plant. But then I flex downward, knees down to the balls of my feet. Oh, 70-30. Now I'm in a position to where Everything can be connected to the top of the swing more because my weight distribution can work in a way that the pressure goes from the front of the foot now to the back of the foot as I turn rather than having it sitting back already, which is why we don't like seeing those hips behind the ankles. It really just causes disconnection from the start. Everything gets back here too soon and the arms and hands have to lift without the body turning, okay? All right, so when you get back in here, you have your list. You're a smart guy. I know you'll, I know you, I know you'll dial it in but nail the process, okay? Does it feel weird with that left foot up there like that? Because I know you, you're set up for so long, it's that you get open with your feet. I hear when you get in here, really feet first. Flare that left foot out a little bit more, buddy. Like this. There you go. All right, hands forward. Awesome. Use that body. Use the elbows. Do remember the elbows together? Big body turn. Less arms to the top. Really focus on using your body to turn your arms to the top and then go after it. There you go. That was better. You know what's cool, buddy? That, um, that hip bump becomes a swing trigger for your turn. Does that make sense? So hop over there with Gabe real quick. Watch. Bump. That bump just goes, okay, well now I can just turn. 
Absolutely. Yeah. It, it, and it's not just, it, it really is. It's, it's okay, well, if you think about it like this, if I just had one leg, right, there's like a metal pole there that I could simply just turn around. Okay. Well, now, why don't I create that in my setup as well as a brace that's going to prevent me from moving laterally, that's going to help me turn right into my right side, right? So when you look at that, that nice hip bump, boom, turn, and I can unwind and cover it. And what's nice about that setup is not only does it promote the better turn, but it's like a counterbalancing of the golf swing at the top to where my upper body's loaded behind the ball, but my lower body's already solid and on the left side to where, what, what can I do? I can just unwind right around that leg and look what happens. My chest gets pulled right over my front foot and there's that motion that just, you know, covers the golf ball, makes good contact, better angle of attack and traps it down your line consistently, okay? So what I wanted you to do when you're in here, you just get into a rhythm. You're like, okay, well, feet together, hip bump, taller in the legs, okay? That nice hip bump's going to just promote that turn, okay? Mm. That's nice, dude. It just matters more to me right now that you make a lot of good swings with a very structured setup that's the exact same every time, the right setup every time, and then you have the same mentality in the swing of, okay, I understand what I'm doing. I'm putting myself, I'm setting the angles to turn around, and I'm gonna make sure I create that motion, or I'm sorry, create that movement based upon my setup, okay? Those feet a little more square, buddy. I just dropped the right one way back. Like, way back. <laughs> there you go. Like, I want to see you take some swings like that, yeah. I don't want to see you hit those cuts with that, with those feet pointed 20 yards left of our target. Yeah, so aim down the alignment rod line, which would start the ball to the right center of that green out in the far distance out there. So watch there right there. I just want you to be able to see this, that's all. Oh dude, you like every time. Every time. Like big time though. Gabe's right back there like, man, this, <laughs> this guy stripes it, but man, he can't get his feet straight no matter what. Like look at that, look at that. Like drop that right one back more, dude. There you go, now you're square. That's square. Hands way forward, hands up. Stay right there. There you go. That arm's kind of pinched in like that. Now we're talking, bud. That ball started right out on line where, you're, where, where, where we're aiming. So that's one thing too, you know, just like go back and look at where you're aiming exactly. Like look at the alignment rod real quick and just like kind of get a feel for what that line would be. See what I'm saying? And then, you know, and then just understand that when you sit up, it's like this every time. And because you're like over like here. Shoulders are square, but these are way open. So just know it's gonna to have to feel like this for a minute here, just for a minute. Hands forward. So it, boil, it boils back down to making sure that you have a process. So not just using this T pattern right here to help your eyes right now, but going to the golf course and making sure that, okay, this is the way that I'm gonna make sure I do this right. I mean, look at the reason why I like starting with my toes literally together, like hugging the alignment rod, is because I can see if my toes are staggered or not, right? So then when I widen out, I can just do it slowly to where I make sure those toes are staying in the line. Knowing that it's comfortable for you, as simple as this sounds. You know, I know it sounds like, you know, 
could be watching and thinking, I know exactly what he's going through or knowing or thinking, gosh, just change it, make your feet straight. No, it's not that easy, especially when our eyes work in funny ways, right? And what's comfortable to us. Your body just wants to step like that. So for you, and here's the reason, I, I only am making this a little bit big of a deal right now is because the last lesson too, we talked about it. And I know you're, he's this guy's so good about picking up on things and he always has things just dialed in so quickly. That's why you're so good. Um, but when I see you don't, you know, fix something simple like that, well, there's a reason why. It's just comfortable for your body to be the other way and it's just your body hasn't wanted to change it yet. And even if you think you're changing it, you're not. So that's where I'm just like, hey, get a simple process, get the toes together, develop that now so when you go to the course, you don't have to go through this whole period of like, oh, I think I'm lined up right or I think, you know. You got it, here we go. Thank you guys so much for watching our video. Any questions or comments you have, please leave them below. Also, click the link below to pick up three free videos. We appreciate you guys. Enjoy our channel.